The purpose of this screencast is to show you how to generate a box plot in Excel. Unfortunately, Excel will not automatically generate a box plot, although with a little creative manipulating, we certainly can create one. Notice as you look at the screen that I've done a little bit of prep work today. First, I've put in some exam grades into column A, and I've also set up an informational chart, so to speak, in columns D and E. I'm going to need some various heights to build my box plot, and those heights are determined by the five number summary. So first, I'm going to put my data in order, then I am going to create a five number summary with the minimum quartile one, the median quartile three, and the maximum. Next I'm going to take those numbers and make a new column in F that will relate to my various heights and whiskers and then we will actually create our box plot. I know it sounds complex but once you've done it a few times it gets pretty easy. So we're going to start because we can't find our five number summary until we put our data in order. So we're going to start right here, select our data, go up to the data tab, and on that ribbon we are going to ask it to sort from smallest to largest. It will just make more sense when we're doing our box plot to have it in this order, although really you could do it either way. As you notice, with a click on the A to Z, my numbers are now in numerical order from 56 to 100. Because I put a heading in here, you can see that I started actually in cell A2 with my grades. That means that I have 19 grades in this particular set. The first thing that I need to do is find the median, which is the middle number. If I click on cell A11, I think I have found the middle number in my set of data. However, I'm going to double check by just doing a quick count. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers below 85, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers above 85. So for me, that is the median of my set of data. Remember from discussions in your book and on class that if the median actually falls between two values, for instance if there had been 20 grades in this set instead of 19, you would have had to have taken the two middle numbers and found the mean of those, added them up, divided by two. However, for our purposes where I want to concentrate on really building the chart, I'm going to give us a relatively simple data set to work from. So that is our median, and I'm actually going to go back to the home page and highlight that so it stands out a bit. Now I'm going to find quartile 1. So I look and I see that I have nine numbers. The middle number in that should occur right here in value number 6, and if I look at that I can see that there are four numbers, 56, 72, 78, and 78 above 79, and four numbers 80, 82, 84, and 84 below 79. So that is the median of my top half, and the median of the median is quartile 1. So I will highlight that and label it for our purposes so that we don't lose it later on. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom half of my numbers and once again if I count down five values below the median, not including the median, and highlight that, we can see that I have four values above it, four values below it. That is quartile three. Now once I'm done with that, as the last step, I will go up and identify my minimum value and the maximum value. Again, sometimes quartiles 1 and 3 will fall in between two values, in which case you'll take the mean of the surrounding two values. If you go to the Data Analysis Tool Pack, 
you can find the median. However, do not, and I repeat, do not take their values for quartile 1 and quartile 3. Excel computes quartiles based on percentiles, and that's not how we do that for this particular section of study. So we have our values now, and for our purposes, I'm going to go back up and in a slightly different color here, highlight the min and the max. Remember, they were included when we determined quartile 1 and quartile 3. That's why we don't identify them until the end so that you don't get confused. Now we're ready to actually plug some values in. Well, we know quartile 1 is 79. That is going to be our height 1 value. Height 2 is actually made up by taking the median and subtract quartile 1. So what a great opportunity to let Excel do that for us. That way we won't have to worry about careless errors. So I'm going to take the median value and subtract quartile 1. When I press enter, it puts the value in. That's a height of 6. Now we need to go down to quartile 3. And again, I'm going to put an equal sign in there first so that they know a formula is coming. I'm going to select quartile 3. I want to subtract, and from that I'm going to subtract the median. Press Enter, and it does it for us. In the bottom whisker, we have to take quartile 1 and subtract the minimum. Again, I'll put in my equals quartile 1 minus the minimum. And finally, the top whisker is going to be the maximum value. It's easy to forget to put that equal sign in first, so don't forget to do that, which is A20 minus quartile 3. In effect, what we are going to do here is we are going to build a stack. And the height of the bottom block of that stack is going to be 79. Then we're going to add another stacked block that has a height of 6, which will bring us up to 85, which correlates to our median. Then we're going to add another block onto that height that itself has a height of 8, and that will bring us up to 93 giving us that center rectangle of our box plot. So we're ready to create it. I am going to select only the top three values, not the whisker values at this stage of the game. Then I'm going to go to Insert. I'm going to go over to my charts and click on the down arrow because what I want is a stacked column. Now when I select that, notice that what you see down there does not look at all like a box plot, but that is fine. We will make it appear like one in just a moment. So I'm going to select that so that it appears for us. Then I'm going to go over to Switch Row Column, and this is critical. If you don't do this step, then you're not going to create your box whisker plot. So I will click on that, and notice what happens. Now instead of my rectangles being separate entities. They are stacked one upon the other. And I can even check my heights here. If I look at this height right here where I've put the cursor, I can see that it looks like it's close to 80. And lo and behold, quartile 1 is 79, so that's a good thing. Then I can look at the next height, which is right about here, and I can see that is close to 85, which it is. That's my median. And then if I go up to the next height, it's between 90 and 95, which most certainly is very close to 93, which is my third quartile. So, with that in mind, now all we have to do are add some whiskers and get rid of that bottom supporting rectangle down here. So that's where we're going to go first. We're going to click on this, 
and notice that the outside bubbles appear in each one of the corners. Then I'm going to right click and go down to Format Data Series. When I select that, the pane opens up on the right hand side. Now for those of you that have a version of Excel for the PC older than 2013, when you right click on that option it will set all of the options that are in our separate pane in a column right about here on your screen and then you'll be following the same process but selecting from them. So now that I know that this is what I want to do when I click on this and I go up here to add, I can add an error bar and that's what I'm going to do. My whisker is really going to come from an error bar and I'm going to go over here to the options and down to more options. Once I'm there, at this point because I want my bar to come down off of the top of my blue rectangle. I am going to select minus. When I do that, if you are watching the center of the screen, you could see that little whisker contract. But it's not set to the correct level because I really want that bottom whisker to go all the way down to 56. So I have to add height to that so that it will do that. So I'm going to go down to custom specify value and I'm going to leave positive error value alone because I don't want that. I'm going to go down to negative error value and type in my bottom whisker quantity which is in cell F5 and that's 23. So I'm going to put that in there, select OK and now I have a whisker that if we look at it seems to go approximately down to the mid 50s and that's what we want. We want it to be at approximately 56. Now I don't want a blue box there. If you notice from the box plots in your textbook they certainly don't have a background color. So I'm going to select this again, go to the paint bucket and ask it for no fill and no line border. And then I'm going to click off and see what happens. If that disappears right away the way it should, then you're fine to go on. If it doesn't, sometimes you'll notice that the no line will not be there. And um, if you have to go back and do it a second time, that's perfectly okay. Now all we need to do is put on our top whisker. To do that I'm going to click on the upper rectangle this time. I am going to right click on that and go to format data series again. I have found that when you don't do that it presets some values in from the previous um, whisker that you added and that's not what you want. You want this to be a new thing altogether. Then we can go up to add go to error bars, go down to more options. This time we want to add a value even though it looks like it's upside down from what we want. It looks like it's a, a bottom whisker. Really this is the rectangle and this is the whisker with the cap. So it is heading in the right direction. We do want it to be capped. We don't want a fixed value. We want to put in our own custom value. So to do that, I'm going to click on custom, specify value. And up there it's already highlighted in positive error value. I'm going to enter the 7. That was right here for my top whisker which means that we want to have the whisker go up seven units from the 93 which is the height of our third quartile or the top of that box. So when I click on OK there we have it. I click off of it and you can see that we have a very nice 
box and whisker plot that goes from our minimum value to our quartile 1 value to our median value to our quartile 3 value and finally to our maximum value. If you're not happy with the way that the chart looks, if you think you would like to expand it and make it wider, then click on any of the numerical values in that left hand axis and automatically format access will appear. If you have an older version, once you click on it and you have the box around it, right click in that box and all of these options will open up for you. Go over to text options and then axes options and you can change your range of values. I kind of like it going from 0 to 120 because if I wanted to compare this to another class that might have lower values I already have them set there but certainly if you wanted to see it on a larger scale we really only need to go from 50 to 110 so I certainly could change this to a 50 change this to a 110 which it did automatically kind of nice and there we have it we can see it a little bit better if that's what we need to do again before you leave this as we've talked about in previous screencasts go down to sheet one double click change that to grades and then a descriptor of what it's showing, in this case a box plot, and you're good to go. Of course you don't want to forget to save your entire file, just changing the name at the bottom of the sheet won't save the file, so don't forget to do that as well. And there you have it, a very nice looking, professionally done box plot. I hope you have found this screencast helpful. Thank you for viewing.